Hi, this is Brad Bertram with Dude Crew, and welcome to Do It Yourself. This week I'll be showing you how I did my external fuel system on my 2022 RXTX 300. This is a danger if you try to vent inside of your ski compartment. So doing these fuel systems and doing this video, I've done probably four or five fuel systems and this video is gonna show you, it's not gonna be the same ski. I took the best out of each one and kind of put it all together, matched it all together. So I can get a good, try to get more information to you guys on how this fuel setup is done. All right, as you can see, I spared no expense on the graphic design of this uh, fuel system. You got a 5H Atwood P-Trap bent which comes out 5 8 hose and you need to reduce it from a 5 8 to 3 8 and you go 3 8 uh, fuel line all the way back to your tank. You put a 3 8 male fuel quick connect. On this side, tank side, you put you a female, 3 8 female quick connect that hooks into your vent side of your tank. Your fuel line that runs to a male quick connect, 3 8 quick connect, up to a 3 8 female fuel quick connect. That runs the side of your ski all the way up to your two inch mender, which your three eighths well bar. And that's inside your fill line of your basic yes. design is you need to have a vent system coming to your rear gas tank, which as the gas is being used in the jet ski, as it lowers, it makes a siphon. It siphons, it makes a, a vacuum on the fuel line side. So the air comes into the tank and goes into the fill neck. After removing the seat, you will need to remove 13 bolts for the engine compartment cover. Then you will need to remove the ergolock panels. You have two bolts and two plastic pull clips to take the side panels off. You'll see two uh, these two things I'm pointing at, they're just for inside strapping of uh, lines and, and wires, so don't worry about them. You will need to remove all the bolts inside the storage bin around the top. You will need a T27 bit to get these bolts off. Okay, before you can take off the shock absorber, you need to go ahead, after you take off your ergo panels, you need to take this front cover off. And to do that, you have two bolts on the inside, a small bolt, I think that's 10 millimeters, one on each side. So we take this two bolts off this slides forward. And this slides forward, after you take off the shock absorber, you can put you a bungee cord up here, and then mount it if you have the eye available on your trailer, where it keeps that cargo hatch all the way open. It makes it easy but then get your cargo plastic up and get to your fuel. Got the two straps, pull up the boot, unscrew the shock absorber for you. The speakers have to come off first before you can pull the last panel. You have one bolt at the top and you have to use a long screwdriver. Here's an eight, eight inch screwdriver and you have to pull it. There's a little hole at the bottom. You have to go in horizontally, go in, and then once you have it in, leave the screwdriver in place, and then you have to wiggle the speaker side to side while pulling back. It does not come up, it's got to go straight back to come off. And you'll see a picture of the clip here in just a minute. There it is. And as you can see, you have that little clip with the screwdriver slides on and pushes down to get the speaker off. Now that you have the speaker off, 
Now you're able to get to the final bolt on that final panel. If you don't take the speaker off, you will break that bolt where the bolt goes at the clip. As you can see, there's the bolt right there. And then you have a pull tab that's close to the storage bin or actually part of the storage bin. You have to pull down. Once you remove that bolt, pull down on that pin, that, that clip, and then you slide the whole panel back. Uh, you'll see there's three, three little uh, guides that are on there that you cannot pry up. It has to slide back to get off. I pilot drilled the initial hole and I used a 1 and 3 8 spade bit for my Atwood P-trap. That's going to be the vent. And it will be covered by the Ergolock panel. This will help ensure no water gets to my P-trap. I didn't pull my bin all the way out because there's two vent lines at the bottom that are uh, tie strapped. I didn't want to mess with it, but I pulled it up enough where I can get to my hose and I removed the fuel line and the fuel cap, the whole assembly. This is a two inch hose mender that I had a 3 8 weld bar to weld it on uh, after it was drilled, of course, where it could, this is where your gas is going to flow through. This is where I seal the vents on the vent cap so that now it'll start pulling from my P-trap. And this is where I cut the line. I put my mender in. I made sure I marked the hose so I could get exact alignment so that when I went back, it would go back exactly how the hose came out. I had to cut out just enough for that barb, the width of that barb of the hose. Right here, I glued in the uh, tie strap holders up on the inside of the hole so that once I ran my hoses I could tie them back, get them out of the way, keep them off the motor. Definitely don't want them getting hot with the motor. Uh, here's my inserts for my cable glands. This is where my hose is going to go through my hole. I used uh, the MP16 cable glands and I took and drilled the holes and I used a marine grade epoxy to put them in. <clears throat> this is what the fuel lines look like installed and strapped in on the starboard side of my jet ski. The fuel fill line has been reinstalled. Everything's been tightened up. All the hoses are tightened up. Everything's ready to button up and put everything back together. One of the things I want to just mention about this system too is that you always want to make sure your front tank is full. You know, fill it up as tight as you can because the tighter you can up front is the better suction you have on the back. And you see there's my marine grade epoxy. It's sealing off the vent system and the reason you spill gas or anything else, this is the ventilation system that they have on the sea because the rest of the compartment is sealed off. But that way you won't have an explosion. If, if the cap is your vent and you start venting gas, then it, you have a place for the fumes to go. And that's the sea dues answer. For mine, it's underneath the ergo panel, which is outside of the ski, and it, you're using your P-trap. I've done several different designs or several different skis that I've done the placement for the fuel hose coming out of the engine compartment. In this particular model, or this ski, I went towards the back of, I think that's the pole for the, uh, like your ski pole, one of your sides here. I just took and uh, cut out the bottom side and put it on the back. And then if you'll see, I'll put, uh, this is a six millimeter bolt with an eye on it and a carbiner. And that's what I use to hold my gas tank uh, in place. In my first ski, I actually drilled a hole right about here, my fuel line, and I took a grommet, and I put a grommet on top, and, and epoxy glued it down, and it looked pretty nice. You couldn't tell that it was cut out or anything like that. That's the second option. Third option, you could take a, a motorcycle strap and put it on your seat, lock your seat in place, and I'll show you that in just a minute, but you just, this little square, it's only that doesn't hurt anything, doesn't mess with anything. You put it in right here and I'll show you a finished product. As you can see, the strap is in place and it is not going anywhere. I'm pulling on my ski right now. And you can use this to tie your, your ratchet straps to around your gas tank and it'll secure it on the front end. So you have a bunch of different options. And by the way, this makes for a good, if you're going camping or something, you can use this to go ahead and maybe strap some of your load on your jet ski. All right, I'm gonna give you a look at my gas tank. This is a 16 gallon round track tank. A lot cheaper than marine tanks and I, I wanted it smaller. 
Uh, when you put your straps on, you know, make sure even though I'm coming from the inside right now, I came around and came back through on the inside part to come with that strap. You always want to make sure that that strap at the end is coming on the inside because you can hook this eye right here with a bigger tank. With my 18 gallon tank, I use these eyes right here. Uh, but with the 16 gallon, it's a little bit small. It's 18 and a half by 18 and a half. That's why I picked it. Uh, let's see. The fuel lines. I usually run through the snap. I put my, my fuel lines through there so that they just, you know, they ain't gonna bounce around, they ain't gonna beat around too much. Uh, and that's pretty much the setup I have. Now for the 18 gallon tank, what's different about this 16 gallon round track tank is that this side is your vent side and I have a vent already inside that runs through my P-trap up front. But on the 18 gallon tank, the gas cap is actually your vent. And I'll show you a quick video of a gas tank we set up with the gas cap uh, in just a minute here. But uh, this one, I don't have to do it through the gas cap. This one, I have my own line on each side and I don't have to use the gas cap. I have to disconnect every time I go to put fuel in. This one, I just turn and, and fuel up. So it makes it a little bit easier when you're out and about. Always wanna make sure your gas tank's not gonna move and shake your ski like that. Shake it, make sure that, ski, that tank's not gonna move. And as your tank, you start using your fuel, you wanna come back and crank on your ratchet strap, get another bite whenever you get a chance. Because as, it, as it's full, you'll be able to tighten it up, but as it starts to drop gas, you're gonna have some slack and you'll get some slack in your, uh, in your ratchet strap. So make sure that you tighten it up as you go, you know, every hour or so when you feel like you burnt a lot of fuel, go ahead and check your straps and just make sure it's good to go. As you'll be able to see, we use the gas cap to vent on the 18 gallon tank. All right, so when you're not using your gas tank, you just hook your male into your female and that completes the circuit. You, you don't need the gas tank and you're still making your circuit. You're getting your ventilation into your front fuel tank. And then I always put these two in together, make sure nothing gets inside the fittings and then get it out of the sun because they will swell up. They swell up pretty bad. so if you leave them out in the sun. So I'm showing you most of my parts. I got most of it from Amazon. Definitely don't go on the cheap route when you come to your Quick Connects. You need to have the best fuel system Quick Connects that don't leak when you unplug them. But I probably spent about three, maybe $400 on this fuel system. Also, when you select your fuel lines, get some good fuel lines. 3 8 diameter. Don't skimp on your worm gear hose fittings. You definitely don't want to go cheap on that. And just remember, you may have to adapt to whatever type of ski you're doing your system on. Make sure that when you install this fuel system that you go run your ski, bring your tools with you, check for leaks. Uh, when I do it, I never use a screwdriver to tighten up my worm gear clamp, uh, hose clamps. I always use a ratchet because I can get a lot more tightening on that ratchet than you ever could with a screwdriver. So make sure you get your tools. Go take it out for a test run and then check your fittings. Just make sure you're good to go. I've never, after the first time, I think I had one slight leak on my 19 ski I had. After that, two and a half, three years later, I never did have a leak again. And I would constantly check, but it's if you do it right the first time you won't have to worry about it and the consequences is what you see in the beginning of the video you could blow yourself up so i'm just here to tell you this is how i did my ski I'm not telling you to do your ski this is how i did mine hey this is brad bertrand co-creator of dude crew and i'll see you out on the water